Hi there, in this video today, I'm gonna to be going over the settings that I dial in to the Yi 4K Plus action camera in order to get the very best image quality out of the camera. So if we dive into the settings, resolution, I generally will be shooting in 4K mode. Obviously this camera is capable of 4K up to 60 frames a second, and I'll either be shooting at that 60 frames a second if I wanna use slow motion and slow it down in post, or I'll be using 24 frames a second for my standard frame rate for live action video. The field of view is set to wide, which is the only setting uh, available in the 4K mode. In terms of the metering mode, I found that the average tends to work best. Obviously this is an action camera, so you'll be gonna using it in scenarios, outdoors, uncontrolled lighting, and average obviously looks at the scene as a whole and sets the exposure as an average of that. It won't work in every scenario, but I found that that's probably the best one for most. Video quality set to high. This means the camera is using the highest bit rate available, and so it's recording the most amount of information and it's gonna give you the highest quality of footage. White balance, now this obviously depends on the scene that you're in. Obviously, if you're shooting outdoors, as you would likely be in most scenarios with an action camera, the white balance set to daylight is probably most suitable. I tend not to use auto because that can switch. It's not particularly a great automatic white balance, so I'd rather have it dialed in manually to a fixed white balance. And so daylight for most outdoor scenarios works pretty well. Now the color gives you an option of two picture profiles, either Yi color or flat. Now Yi color is a highly saturated, high contrast image. Uh, I'm not particularly interested in it because I'm always going to be doing color grading in post. So I want the most flexibility. And so I will select the flat picture profile. Now, even with that selected, generally a flat picture profile is one with low contrast and low saturation. But what I found with this particular camera is that it does desaturate the image, but it also still leaves a lot of contrast. And this is typically in the shadows. I'm not quite sure why the camera does this. I think it's because it's really trying to protect the highlights but what happens is that the blacks and the shadows end up being really crushed and so virtually every scene that you record in it looks very dark now basically just reducing the contrast in post before i start my creative type grade uh, really brings out more detail and even by doing that and bringing up those shadows i was expecting to see potentially quite a bit of noise in those shadows but it doesn't i think it's just the way that the camera processes the image internally, for some reason it really crushes the blacks down even though there appears to be quite a lot of detail still actually in the video signal and it's just a matter of pulling out that information in post by reducing the contrast and boosting the shadows up a little bit. Now the shutter option, I will generally have that set on auto. The exception to that would be if I'm shooting in a pretty controlled scenario where I know the lighting isn't gonna change and I actually wanna dial in a manual uh, shutter value. Um, same with ISO, I will generally have that set to 1600 max. And that is pretty much the limit for this camera, anything higher than that and you'll get super grainy footage. If it's a bright day, you can drop that down to 400 uh, and that should be fine. But generally, as a rule of thumb, 1600 works pretty well as an ISO max. Sharpness, I have set to low. If I wanna do any sharpening, I will add that in post. I don't want the camera adding it artificially. It makes the, the footage look very crunchy and very video-like. Uh, so I'll always dial that down to the lowest value. Uh, in terms of the uh, exposure value um, and the exposure compensation, I will generally have this set to zero or maybe half a stop overexposed. Like I said, with that footage with the flat picture profile, it has a very dark appearance and it really crushes the shadows. So I definitely don't want to be underexposing my footage any further. So I found either just leaving it at zero or, or dialing in half a stop overexposed works pretty well. In terms of the electronic image stabilization, I'm not a big fan of it in this camera. It doesn't look particularly natural. You get lots of micro jitter. It works okay. It depends what you're using the footage for. Typically, I will use this camera on a gimbal. So I generally have the image stabilization off. 
It doesn't work in the 4K 60 mode anyway, and that slow motion when you're using a gimbal as well will give you nice and smooth footage rather than trying to add it in on the camera. So hopefully that's been a useful look at some of the settings that I dial in to make sure I get the highest quality image from the camera. If you've got any questions or comments, please drop them below. I'll be more than happy to get back to you. Hope this video has been useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.